Hi everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up an assessment first option in your Storyline modules. The reason that you might want to do this and why I've used it in the past is that it can recognize people that already have experience in a particular topic area and may already know the content. So rather than having to take the whole module and then the assessment, they're able to take the assessment and if they pass, then they're complete. So it can be an option for them to complete the module a bit quicker. So I'm going to show you how to set that up. Now, I've gone ahead and set up the structure already, uh, and I'll just talk through that now. Um, one of the things I like to do in my um, projects when I have a number of topics and quizzes and different things is I like to set things up in different scenes, So, which is what I've, I've done here. So essentially, you have an introduction to, to the module, maybe a title and something to you know talk about what the, the module is about. But then you get to a slide where you would give the user a choice. Now, I know you can't read what's on that one, but it's at the moment, it's just two buttons. And one button on the left here will take you to an assessment first option so take the test and then the second button uh, is designed then to take you to the module and then you'll complete the assessment so if I scroll down we can see the assessment first option and then the module followed by the final assessment now there's a couple of results slides there that are blue I'll talk about why that's the case in a little bit but I just want to talk you through the, the structure of setting that up. Now, in terms of this slide where you give the user a choice, on those two buttons, it's simply a couple of triggers. One trigger is to jump to the first slide of the assessment first when the user clicks the button. The second button is jump to the first slide of the module when the user clicks the, that particular button. Now, you'll see here that I have... Uh, two sets of assessment questions. They're very short, I just for the purpose of the demo. Obviously your assessments could be longer than that. Um, I've, I've got them, I've got two lots of the same questions um, uh, because like I'm gonna talk through, it will allow me to potentially have the two assessments set up slightly differently. Uh, you could potentially just have one lot of questions, uh, but then you have to remember that if some people might be taking the assessment first and then if, if they need to take the full assessment later, you know, they, it could become a bit tricky. So I, I like to keep it separate. But I do recognize that if there are any changes to questions, having two like this, you've got it in two um, different places, you'll have to make the updates. Now, the way that I, uh, I've set this up with the assessment first, uh, there are probably other ways to do it, but hopefully this might just give you some ideas and you can build upon that or modify as needed for your particular um, projects. So what I've done here with this assessment first is um, I've set it up in, in a way that um, because if somebody's saying they already know the content, this assessment is actually the set of questions I should say is set up that um, the person has to score 100% to pass if they're going to skip the whole module. That could be something also to put your subject matter experts at ease that you know it's not an easier necessarily option um, and what um, having it set at 100% pass also gives me the option that if somebody doesn't get a question right so with obviously with 100% pass mark you, get, you as soon as you get a question wrong you've you've failed um, that when they get a question wrong that their their next move is to go to the actual module itself so um, I'll go to a question in the assessment first and what I've done in terms of the, I'll go to form view, look in terms of the setup, for the assessment first I've only given the user one attempt, again you could give them two but again they're saying that they know the content so they just get the one attempt. And if I look at slide view and then the incorrect layer, because obviously if they get it correct they'll progress to the next question, that's fine. On the incorrect layer, what I've done, and I've done this for the other questions individually, but I've left it here to show you, is that I've added some text to say that they didn't get the question right and now they'll have to complete the module. And then if I look over in the trigger panel, these are the default triggers which you normally get on a quiz question to hide the layer and then to continue. But I want the assessment to end because there's really no point continuing if they get one wrong and they can't pass by answering the rest of the questions. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete the hide layer trigger because I don't 
need that trigger anymore. And then what I want them to do, I don't want them to jump to the next slide when they click the continue button. I want them to jump to the first slide of the module because they've got a question wrong, you can't pass, now you have to go and do the module. So I've done that on the incorrect layer of all of my quiz questions in the assessment first section. So you'll need to do that. And then when you get to the result, essentially somebody's only going to get to the result slide if they pass. And at 100%, it means they've got all of the questions correct. Um, you know, there is still the fail layer there. I've just left it there. I could delete it off. It's really not going to be shown because the way I've set up every question is to, you get one wrong, you go across to the, to the module. So that's the assessment first. Then if I look at the module itself, these are just regular slides. You have your content, all of that kind of thing. Um, then they'll complete the module and then they'll need to take the final assessment. So um, I have a, like a, I call it an intro slide. I've got an intro slide in the assessment first. I always like a slide before the assessment to kind of let people know what they need to do, how many questions they like, what the pass mark is, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then for these questions in the assessment, um, at the final assessment, I have given the user, you know, two chances to, to answer the question. So that's, this is what I was saying about having two sets of the same questions does allow me to set the, the two assessments up slightly differently. So I've done that for all of the, all of the questions. In this case, if they get a question wrong, they still will progress. Um, I've even set the assessment for this one. And again, this will be depending on what you need. Um, I have set the passing score for the final assessment at, at 80. That's the default. But if, again, if you want to make both of them the same, both of them a hundred, you could do that. Um, one of the things I wanted to show you on a results slide, if you're using um, Storyline, 360 is um, there's an option in um, in Storyline where if somebody does fail an assessment or a quiz and they have to redo it, that you can get them to only do the questions that they got wrong, just in case you didn't know about that. So it's on the failure layer and we've got the re this, this here to reset um, the results for this particular section of my um, assessment. And if I double click on this trigger, it it's going to show me that, um, you know, reset the results when they click the retry button. And here I've got this option to reset only incorrect questions. And if I select that, what that will mean is if somebody fails, they only need to do the two or three or four questions that they got wrong. They don't have to do the whole quiz again, which I, I think is, is, um, is a good way of doing it as well. So that's our two assessment options, having it assessment first or having that they complete the module. So the user is in control, they can choose um, which path they, they want to take. But because of we're giving them this um, choice, we are creating two potential pathways for somebody to complete uh, a module, especially when you're running it through the learning management system. So I've highlighted the two uh, sl the re two result slides in blue, just to sort of show you they're the, the two potential pathways. Um, I don't normally finish a, a module on the result slide of an assessment. I always like to have a some sort of a, whether it's a summary slide or and a, maybe a, a, a closing slide or something like that, just to, to finish everything off and tell people that they're done and they can exit. So what I've actually done in, an, in another scene is I've added what I've just called an end slide. And from each of the result slides, I've triggered it that they will pass through there. So regardless of the two pathways <clears throat> that you take, um, both pathways will, will end up on this finish slide and then <clears throat> uh, the, the, the users can close the, the module down. Now, uh, there's another one last thing I just wanted to show you was that when you go to publish your module for the learning management system, uh, in the past, um, you know, Storyline can only track one result slide and we've got two. So we don't know what pathway people are going to take. So thinking about how we um, deal with that, that, that Storyline will, will track the result slide regardless of what um, which path they've taken. Now, 
in September last year, there was an update um, to, to, to Storyline. So if you're not on the latest version or since then, you may not see this, um, but I'll just show you. If I go into reporting and tracking for the LMS, um, there's the option of how we're going to track completion. And there's this new newish option that is you can track it when the learner completes a quiz because we've got a couple of quizzes. And what it's saying is it's actually going to pick up on either of those results slides. So that will take care of that, um, that pathway for us. So if the user completes, Storyline calls it the pre-check, <clears throat> uh, if they complete that assessment first option, it will mark them off as complete when they hit that first result slide or if they go through the module because remember if they don't if they fail the first one they're not ever going to see the results because they're going to get directed to the module it's going to track the the quiz after the module so there's actually nothing we really need to do just to make sure we've got that those settings are, are kind of there and ready to go now if if you're not using the latest version of storyline um, what you would need to do is this end slide here that we force people through before the module finishes, you will need to um, potentially put in a, a blank result slide. You could do that in the results. There's a, there's a blank result slide option, which doesn't have any text on it, but you can track it. You can track it um, uh, when you go to publish. Um, the other thing you could do Oops, I didn't actually mean to insert it. Um, the other thing you could do would be on this end slide, you could add a, a course completion trigger. So you could complete, just scroll down, you could complete the course when the timeline starts on it. So again, that will send a, a message to the LMS to, to, to mark the user off as complete um, once they're finished. So that's it. That's how you can add an assessment first option to a storyline project. Hope that's helpful. And remember, there there are some you could um, customize that to to your needs for your particular projects.